Good evening. Welcome to Lightning Talk Practical Course Materials Online. Uh, my name is David Redman, and I'm happy to host you this evening. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat, and I will get them in order. Or if there's an overflow of questions, I will answer them individually afterwards. I'll keep a copy of the chat for my purposes. Uh, here is the web page where my presentation is posted. I just threw that in the chat. And you're welcome to ask me questions anytime individually. And you can reach me at that email there. I'll repeat those two links as we get to the end of the session. So here's, here's my ethos. Here's my thought. Here's my way of thinking right here. And that is I want to make all the focus in my courses on material and minimal focus on students' learning tools. I want my objects to be most accessible and following accessibility guidelines. And I want them to be accessible on any device. And sometimes I'm a little bit nervous about products and companies that extract money in between a college and a student. So let's take a look at this website. And we'll come back to this presentation page presently. So this is Dave's web corner. I'm supposed to bring an icebreaker to the session. So not being very creative or social, I'll just make a small joke. Uh, when my daughter who since graduated from college uh, once admitted to me that she thought that I owned 25% of the web because growing up, she knew that there was a Dave's web corner. And, you know, I want you to think about that, how students, regardless of their stage of life that are new to technology or new to the web, how they approach things at face value. I wish I owned 25% of the internet. That would be awesome. But you can see how people take exactly what's printed before them at face value when they're trying to consume materials online. So what should Dave's Web Corner tell you? Dave's Web Corner should welcome you when you visit, whether you're a student or just a visitor. Dave's Web Corner should tell you how to contact Dave. So when you press the contact link, here's information for how to contact Dave. Apparently, Dave teaches mathematics, so you might be interested in the courses Dave is teaching. And here are the semesters that I teach Delta College and the courses I'm teaching in those semesters. And even if future semesters aren't yet assigned, I still have places for them and links to current courses. So let's follow a link to a course like Math 264. And here's the homepage of Math 264. And my presentation is such that I want students to always feel they know where they are on my website. So the same four welcome contact semester mathematics links are posted here, but now it's clear that you're in the fall 2021 semester in Math 264, and you have access to my syllabus and resources. Here are the 16 weeks, the 16 calendar weeks of this course. And as you go into one of these weeks, which burrowing in, we see how we organize the week in our classroom. We have an outline, we have assessments, we have handouts, we have videos, and we have technology. And if you want to check out some of the handouts in the first week, the first week is just getting started, here are the first week handouts in this course. Notice the breadcrumbs at the top of this list. There's, I want it to be very clear that you're in the handouts of week one in Math 264 in fall 2021, in semester fall 2021. Now these handouts are generally PDF files that are attached to a directory like a Google Drive. I can link out to them and then we can follow them. Uh, if you want to check out the videos and you click on videos, you're going to see the videos that I'm producing for the students in this course. And uh, they're not exciting or they're not Oscar worthy, but they just basically link to a YouTube channel. I'm not going to, I'm gonna stop this from playing if it tries to start playing, but this is just, notice a one minute and 39 second video, apparently about equilibrium solutions in differential equations. So quick, short, informative links. 
if I want to pass on other information and technology, some proprietary programs like Excel or GeoGebra or Desmos, all things that are commonly used in mathematics classrooms, then I link out to a Google Drive where students can pick up the file. Uh, here it's a computer algebra system called Mathematica and complete that assignment. But the thing that I'm most excited about or I try to focus most heavily on is instead of just consuming this page on my desktop, I want this page to be just the same for everyone on a mobile device. So now I'm showing you my desktop and this window on the right hand side is simulating about the size proportionally of an iPhone SE. I tried to make it a little bit larger so that I could read it, but the proportion is approximately correct. And I can follow exactly where I am, exactly what I'm looking at. I can go backwards and I can pick up the next week or the next thread. I can look at the welcome message, which is approximately the same. I can look at the contact information. No student has an issue using this on an alternate device, a uh, tablet, a phone, and I test this on relatively old material, tablets and phones. Now let's go to show you exactly how I suggest you could create this. So I'm gonna to go to the mathematics page where I share some things I know about mathematics. I'm gonna to go to my presentations page. The links I will put again in the chat at the end of the session. And these are just presentations I've made at various places or events. And the top of the list right now is practical course online material, materials online. So this is organized a little bit like a course. I'm just delivering information and, and my mode of operation is lists, lists of lists, and links inside lists. So I'm much the way you organize a to-do list on your desktop. So in this web page, I've given you a brief introduction, which was printed in the following days for sure, a basic web page example, an intermediate web page example, and a more detailed web page example, and the resources you need to write your own web pages. Those resources are generally just a text editor and a file transfer protocol client, a program that deposits your web page, which is just a text file, on the Delta College servers or wherever you're posting your web page. Text editors can go from very basic to very fancy. Notepad is in any Windows system, text edit, any Mac OS system. I tend to use a text editor called BB Edit on Mac OS because it allows me some extra flexibility. How hard is it to learn HTML? It's not very hard at all. So here's a link to HTR tutorials, HTML tutorials, and a book that I enjoy. And it was kind of a higher level organizational book called HTML5, The Missing Manual. Let me show you an HTML file, the one that produced that index page that we started at. So I'm going to blow this up, full screen it. And then I'm going to use the properties of this text editor to simplify things a little bit to show you a basic HTML page. An HTML page is simply a text file that begins and ends with HTML tags. It's much like writing a Word document, but putting in all the instructions in the Word document. In the head, I describe the file and its contents, things like keywords or author. And sometimes if I want to do deliver more in the page, I include references to perhaps some exterior instructions. In the body, you can often find a header, navigation links, main content, and a footer. The header might be as simple as Dave's web corner. Navigation links are the four links you saw at the beginning, welcome, contact, semesters, and mathematics. 
These are enclosed in what are called anchors. And the anchors have a hypertext reference that direct you to the place I want you to go. And the main body of this website has a header and a bunch of paragraphs enclosed in HTML paragraph text. In the footer, I included an email link, a link to Delta College, and a link to the base of my website. That is a very basic web page. But if we iterate with links and lists, we can create some exceptional examples. And just uh, for your interest, before I take any questions, I'll look at a more detailed page, which we started at in the Math 264 Week 1 page. So apart from the outline assessments, handouts, and technology, I want you to also look at this example that's relevant to mathematics and some sciences, where I can print hypertext markup language, gives me mathematical formulas. This is called the mathematical markup language. And this can be read by browsers that uh, are assisting students with accessibility issues. So my website is heavy on information, light on images. I often either link exterior to images or make the creation of the images, literally the assignment of the student. But I'm just tr trying to organize my information in the most efficient and universally accessible model that I can. Uh, I thank you for your attention and I better allow some questions here. You throw them in the chat, speak them out. I don't mind either way. And if I don't answer your question, I'll answer it personally later. Sorry to just dump lots and lots of it. I have a fairly general question that maybe some of the folks who are here could possibly answer. Uh, you're using the websites.delta.edu. Yes which was transferred over at some point when we switched to the new version of the website. My understanding is that any faculty who have joined the college since that time are not given any space to make their own web pages. I, I, I can't confirm or deny that because I was probably grandfathered in, but you can request space. And at times when I have needed more space, I have requested more space but now I move towards the other end where I want to be a little more concise. So websites.delta.edu is just a server, a Delta College that they use to direct that traffic. And I would be surprised if they did not allow that. I know colleagues in math who also do this. I, I have a colleague, well, the reason I bring it up is I have a colleague who asked and was flat out told no. I, I, I can't, uh, I can't say that that didn't happen. I, I fully <laughs> believe you, but, but the problem I have here, and now we're gonna, we're up to 20 seconds to time. The mission is to connect with students. The mission is not to spend multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars on exterior tools. Anyone can use the material that they want to use. I'm very comfortable with that, but we should look for the most diverse ways of presenting to our audience and not artificially restrict it. I must apologize because I have to keep to the timeline of the organizers. And uh, please contact me in general if you would want more information before I leave. I'm gonna post this link again. I will investigate what you're reporting and see if I can assist anyone who is in a similar position. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm just bringing it up because, you know, if people wanted to do this, if they're fairly new to the college, apparently they're not going to be able to. I will look into that. Thank you. Sure. Have a good evening.